Our objective for the day, you're going to see it in two spots. Where the first spot you're going to find it? On the board. On the board. What is the objective for the day? Students will determine whether lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither with 100% accuracy. All right. Beautiful. 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 Answers what? Six. So I have six people that don't know that answer. According to the data, how many people got the first problem? Six. six. Watch this data. How many people had the first problem wrong? Six. six. How many people you think got this problem wrong? Six. six. Oh. Why do you think they got, why, for this first problem, why did they check, why did they select A as an answer? For where did they jump? So let's go to Paris. The airport is called Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport, and the Earth is going to move, and we're going to get there, and that's how the terminal looks. And when you get there, that's the airport. Okay? That's the airport. And in order to get to that airport, right, I just want you to look at several things about the uniqueness of this airport. When you get there, that's the terminal. Say it again. Perpendicular and parallel. So you see, this is the runway. This is where you land. Now when you, this is where you're going to land. But where are you leaving from? You're leaving from where? New Orleans. So now I'm going to transfer back. So one of the things I want you to see is, here's a parallel line, here's a parallel line, parallel line, parallel line. And what's the uniqueness, what's the unique characteristics about parallel lines? Same slope. Same slope. Slopes are the same, okay? So let's jump back to us having to leave Louis Armstrong. That's where you're gonna leave from. So your mom is gonna take you to the airport, she's gonna put you on a plane, and she's gonna drop you off at the terminal. And so the terminal is basically a point. Your mom is gonna let you out the car, and when she lets you out the car, she's gonna drop you at a point. So let's say that point is right here. That's where she drops you off. Now do me a favor. Write this point down. Okay? One, two, three, four. Four, negative one, two, three, four, five. Four, negative five. Take that point. Write that point down. That point is what? Four, four negative five. And I'm going to call this my terminal. He said the easiest way. You got two points on the graph already. So if I'm calculating rise over run, rise, I do what? Go or I go down. And then I go over. go over. So these two points are on the line. Here's one point. There's another point. So I can easily do what? Rise over run. Count down how many? Two. And then over, I counted down how many? Two. Keep that number in your head. Count down two and then start counting. So what's the slope for that line? Two. Two. Negative, two. Negative, two. Negative two over seven. All right, good. M was equal to what? Negative two over seven. Negative two over seven. Now, if I want to create another line, in order to create a line, what do I need? Two points, two points right? So I'm going to create a line that's parallel to it that my plane is going to take off of, which is the actual runway. Absolutely. I'm going to use, not this one, because this is where my mama dropped me off. You with me? My mama dropped me off right here at the terminal. Now, I boarded the plane. When I boarded the plane, the plane got on the taxiway, and now it's about to get on the runway, and that runway is what? Is that runway... Say it again. That runway is parallel. So that, par that, that runway should have the same slope. same slope. Well, I put a point on the graph already. How do I find the next point? You go one. Just moving the line. Say that again. No, she said it. Do what? You go what? You go down. Go down two and over seven. That will give me my next point. So if that point is sitting right here, I should be able to go down 
one, two, and over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and boom. That point is on the what? On the line. Y'all see it? All right, so now I have that. So I'm going to change the color of this line because this line is now my runway. Ask you a question. Why you said you go down to why you don't go up to That's a good question. Answer. Because you go you go down to and over to because when you down to and over because, because the slope is negative. Slope is what? Negative. Positive. Negative. negative. Zero. Zero. Undefined. Positive, negative, zero, undefined. Okay, so that one was what type of slope? Negative. Negative. So that's why I went down two over seven. seven. Now, but I now want to leave the terminal, and I want to leave the terminal and go to the runway. But I want this. I want this line to be perpendicular. I want this line right here to be perpendicular. And in order for it to be perpendicular, what's the unique characteristic? Same. Opposite, 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 opposite reciprocal. Opposite reciprocal. What is the opposite reciprocal of negative two? So it's opposite. Seven over two. Slope that's perpendicular is what? Seven over two. And what sign? How many points you need to construct the line? Two. So what I need to do is go from this point and do what? Go up. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then over one, two. So this other point should lie. Uh oh, where is it? Right there. That's what I did. Yeah. It sat there. Well, guess what? This should be the line that is what? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. So that would be that line that's perpendicular. Okay. Now, now I got points. Got it? I got points. I have slopes, and now I need to construct equations. Y'all heard? I have points, right? I have two points that made a line. I have slopes. So now I need to make equations. What does the equation of the line tell me? If I'm dealing with slope-intercept form, what does the equation of the line give you? The slope and the y-intercept. All right? If I'm using point-slope form, what does the equation of the line give you? The point and the slope. Well, if I had to generate an equation of the line, right? If I had to generate one, based on the information that I just created, which one would be the best? Which one would be the best equation for me to use? For any line that I want to create right now. Why? Because I have what? I have points and I have slopes. Right? I have points and I have slopes. So it would be much easier for me to, to create equations of lines when I have what? Points and what? Slopes. Points and slopes. I have points. I have multiple points. And I have what? Slopes. Me too. got to get engaged. I have points and I have slopes. Well, let's just take one and create one equation of the line and transform it into multiple forms. Pick any one you want. Give me one point. Seven over two. Is that a point or is that a slope? That's a slope. That's a slope. All right. Four, negative five. Four, negative five. That's our terminal, right? Four, negative five is a point. I already have that one up. That's the term. So now, what I want to do is write the equation of that line. Do you know the slope for that, that line? Yeah. What is it? Okay, so I have that 
point and I have this slope, and that slope is 7 over 2. How would I write the equation of that line? Which one you said is the easiest? Point slope. You have a performance task. Group maker, three in the group. Look for your name. This right here is going to be group one. This is going to be group two. This table of four. This is going to be group three. In the back, the four tables are going to be group four. The four back here is going to be group four, group five, and that's going to be group six. Group seven is going to come up here. What I need more than anything else is I need an errand monitor. So somebody from the group find out with an errand monitor. That's going to be the person that's going to come and get the supplies. All right, so I need the errand monitor. Now listen carefully with regards to the errand monitor. The errand monitor, I'm going to give the errand monitor all of the supplies that the errand monitor needs. All right? So the errand monitor is going to walk away with several things. Hold this. The errand monitor is going to walk away with the performance tasks. The errand monitor is going to walk away with the roll cards. The errand monitor is going to walk away with the graph paper and with the task on the back to do the work. Okay? The errand monitor will walk away with the marker, posters, ruler. Got it? So before I even send the ask for the errand monitors, I also want to discuss all the other roles in the group. Ms. Trim, whose group are you in? I got four people in that group. Why? Move to the seat that's right in front. Just so that we all stay together. Now, listen carefully to the roles because the roles are important. Just because you say that you are the leader does not mean that you have nothing to do. The role of the leader is to keep the focus on the work. Keep the focus on the work. The role of the recorder is not just to record. But they compile all of the information, and they write the stuff on the board for the whole class to see during the presentation. I am the timekeeper, and the presenter is to present the finished work. The presentation is your gallery work. It's your gallery work. So now let's talk about our work because we have 30 minutes in the work. 30 minutes in the work. Right now is I need every Aaron monitor to come see me. Let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. You can sit down. I got you. 1, 2, 3. You need this, a ruler, and a mark. See you later. I'll handle the rest. 1, 2, 3. This, a ruler, and the ball. I'll handle the rest. One, two, three. A ruler and a ball. Next group. One, two, three. A ruler and a ball. Next group. One, two, three. Ruler and a ball. I'm going to take care of Y'all have y'all. Room. Oh. All right. So let's talk about the task that we have before us. In order to, to do well, you have to answer each specific question. So on the group task sheet that you have, the group task sheet that you have looks like this. does it say to do for number one? Draw X and Y axis. So that's the first step. What you're going to do is, before you even transfer it to your big poster board, you're going to do it on the back. All right? So before you transfer it, you're going to do it on the back. So we need to be cognizant of our time because we get out of here at 3.05. All right? So I want our walks to be done at least in 30 minutes. I want our work to be done so that we can have our walks in 30 minutes. What's part two? Place a point on the graph. Label it terminal. What's number three? Number four? 
Number five. Ready? Now it's time for you to get started. I'm putting 25 minutes on the clock. At the 25 minute marker, then I'll tell you it's time to start having that on the posters up and drawn. Yes, sir. Turn. Very good question. Is the terminal in a random spot? Yes. Got it? All right. 25 minutes on the clock. Let's go. I don't to put on the room. Exactly. Is it a turn or a regular park? So you can anywhere that needs a all right, ladies and gentlemen, we can hit the clap. Can you hit the clap once? Miles Rose, once again, can you hit me clap once? You can hear me clap twice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time you all need to start transitioning in order that you put your graphs on the graph paper, on the board, so that we can begin our gallery walk. Now is the time. Group seven, you up here. Group one, group two, group three. Let's go. We all working together. Oh, you got the marker? Use your rulers. Use your rulers. Use your tools. You, you have five minutes remaining for your graphs on the walls to be done. Five minutes. Our gallery walk begins in five minutes. Gallery walk begins.